Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the project bins. There's quite a few, so get ready. Here we go. All right, guys, this is the Eat My Shirt bin. Uh, so this is the one I started with. Now, of course, I have since since then uh, added more shirts to different bins, so it's not exactly the only one. Uh, but this is the original, so let's go and have a look and see what it's been doing. Looks like the top is a bit dry, but then when we get underneath, we're seeing that it's a really nice moisture. Looking at the, the bottom here, this is a mix of the Red Wigglers, the European Nightcrawlers, and the Blue Worms. And they're all about this size. Looking at to see if I can find any food in here other than the shirt. Because what I have been doing is I put the shirt in kind of as an incidental. That's not their only food. Um, but this is one of those mangoes that went bad. It must be inside. Look at that. It's bored its way inside, but yet the whole shell has not dried out or cracked or anything. In fact, it looks like they all have. Isn't that funny? Most of the time when the worms get inside, the shell's already dry and all this fluff has been eaten. Uh, but these worms are overachievers, for sure. Okay, we've come to the shirt. Okay. It's making progress. This is my Bradley University, that is my alma mater. Anybody else wants to share what school they went to, uh, feel free to put that in the comments below. Um, there we go, so it's, it's making progress, but that was a, a good solid shirt. And it uh, doesn't look like it's making too much uh, progress, quite honestly. This looks like it was a, an entire uh, avocado at one point, it's still got the flesh on it. And here's one that looks like it's about ready to germinate. But it certainly looks like they could use some food. Going through everything here, I'm not seeing anything that's readily edible with the exception of these sprouts here. So let's make a trench down the middle here. And then we will feed them up. Really not sure how many worms are in this system. Probably about a half a pound, give or take. So we'll put the sprouts down there and then we'll kind of stretch the shirt out a bit. Make sure the worms have as much surface area as they can come up with. Help them out a little bit, right? All right, so what we have here is some corn. I think that might be coffee grounds. Pineapple head and some pineapple bits, just the outside. And as usual, there is the laundry in the background. I'm going to cover them up. I don't really see any other interesting things that have happened here except for this weird mango. I'll bury that in with them too. But other food, I think uh, not so much. There's nothing, nothing really interesting to see except for that I need to take that tag out of here. All right, you know what, this bin is kind of having a little moisture problem as far as drying out, so I am going to put one of my lids on top of it. It doesn't fit the whole thing, but it does keep the center from evaporating. These are just totes that have been used for, I don't know, whatever else and have broken. So I have a collection of these in the basement that I use as lids for my, uh, my mortar trays. Oh no, and here's one of my favorite knot friends. Now I think this is a, a shell of a uh, snail. I don't think that's like real. I don't think it's alive. But that probably means that there are live snails, those little conical shaped ones in there. Not cool, but I don't see them in any number so it's not too bad. But it does make me worry about when I feed the castings to my plants are there are going to be snail eggs. Let me know if you guys have snail problems and what your thoughts are on that with the, the castings. All right, let me switch out to another project. Okay, here we are at the worm chow only bin. 
Got a lot of ones hanging out on the, the lid here. I did notice that since this is only getting worm chow, this bin is not getting as wet or staying as wet as the other ones. And this one also does have a t-shirt on it, which there are a lot of worms. I'm not sure. I think this is just a plain old white t-shirt. Obviously a lower quality than my Bradley University shirt because this one's already ripped quite a bit. Now what we do have is some mold here. Um, the grains from the uh, worm chow are probably causing a bit of mold. Uh, if you're allergic to mold, you should definitely wear a mask when you're doing this kind of thing. Looks like the population in here is pretty good. Now one of the things that I thought I might be seeing with this bin is that the worms might be getting bigger. Now these are a mix of the reds, blues, and euros, but I honestly thought that I would start seeing them catch a little bit of size, um, which I am not. I mean, if you see the size of the worms here, these are pretty par for the course um, in my bins. These are normal worms. I'm not really force feeding them a lot of food. I tend to check on them. If it looks like they've eaten all of the food, then I give them more, but if there's mold on the top like there was just now, I will not give them more food. I don't want to make the bin toxic. So, but I am going to give these guys a little bit more bedding because it looks like they are tearing through the bedding quite a bit. Okay, so that's a couple of handfuls of the bedding. And I am going to mix that in. It is the moist bedding that I have had sitting around for quite some time, a couple of weeks maybe. Kind of breaking up the clumps a little. Kind of incorporate that, I don't know, maybe one more handful. Just a little handful. Now I have been feeding these guys, you know, without you, but me just throwing, you know, cornmeal mix at the worms is kind of boring so I don't really take you with me all the time but when I go through the whole bin then uh, then I am going to take you with me. So I'm going to put the t-shirt in the bottom this time and uh, cover that up and I've got a vacation in theory if the plague doesn't hit or whatever I've got a vacation coming up so the rule in the house is if you bring new t-shirts in the house you have to uh, get rid of some which means more for the worms. But that is not for a couple of months. But I'm just going to work this in. I know some people say don't work it in. Some people say do. Um, but this is what I do and it seems to work. Nobody's, you know, the worms seem to be happy about it. But uh, as of right now, one of my promises is that the worms would get a little bigger and they are really not so far. So that, that is it for the worm chow only bin. And the worm chow is a third cornmeal, oatmeal, and uh, just yield wheat flour uh, with uh, grit in it. All right, on to the next project. Okay, so now we have the no grit bin and a cricket. Okay, so these guys look to be doing pretty good. Now this was originally just a uh, leaf um, bedding that I started this with. Uh, some people have theorized the reason why they're getting along so good without the grit is that they uh, there was some sort of grit mixed in with the leaves, which um, could be. So maybe this is an entirely just false project altogether, I don't know. But let me get them some paper uh, that doesn't have the, the grit in it and we will feed them up. All right, I'm just gonna kind of give them a little bit more bedding there. With leaves, it's kind of hard to tell if your bedding is completely gone or if it's just leaves that are kind of uh, on their way out, it's hard to tell. So I'm going to give them a little bit more bedding, but then I am going to give them a pretty good feeding. These uh, seem to be doing good. I'm seeing cocoons in here. The worms are about the same size as they always have been. Um, 
Normal. Normal for me, anyway. Um, but yeah, so there's it's a fresh cocoon right there. I'm not sure if I'm getting that on camera, but it's right there. So let me know your opinions below about uh, this project. Um, should I redo it with just paper bedding, uh, making sure there's no grit? Or do you think this is good that I'm just, I'm not adding any grit? There's no grit added. Um, is that good enough for the experiment or should I do this again? Okay, so going right down the middle here, I am going to put in some pineapple skin. Kind of lay that in there. And then the core. And then we're going to cover that up, get rid of the sticker and check on those guys again at a later date. I'm going to put the little lid back on and I'll go get another project. Okay, this was the mushroom bin where I fed mushroom bedding. Um, I was interested to see if there would be any sort of mushroom activity, would they be able to eat it? Because I think it's kind of wood or, or something. Um, obviously I've been feeding it food, um, not just the worm bedding. But I was interested to see how long it would take for the whatever mushroom bedding that they, uh, like this stuff. Is it wood, shaved woods, or wood pellet, or I'm not sure kind of looking to see if I got any mushrooms out of it and then also looking to see if if they could in fact consume it. Um, my son is into growing uh, like culinary mushrooms. Um, I say that because there's other you know like happy mushrooms. Um, reasonably sure that's not happy mushroom. You know what I mean? Kits, I don't think you can buy those on Amazon. But it uh, seems to be that they are breaking it down, not having any problems there. So I'm going to give them some bedding and giving them some food. And if he doesn't get going with the mushrooms, we're going to have to do something else with this bin. Some bedding there. I'm nowhere near wanting to harvest this, so I'm mixing it in. If I was close to wanting to harvest, I would start feeding at one end or something, but this is nowhere near. This is months away, so I think it's okay to incorporate the new bedding wholly within the bin. Okay, so yeah, I was working so hard on my tomatoes, and uh, the birds pecked a hole and got that one all moldy. Darn birds. But they're getting some banana and kiwi as well as the tomato. I think the tomato should be a highlight next time that we come and look at this bin. Kind of put the leftovers that I found from other things in there. And then we will cover, cover this up. Kind of grabbing that. Stick that under there. All right. So nothing super interesting to see in the mushroom bin. Okay, what we have here is the lasagna bin. Got some worms hanging out on top here. The, uh, the top layers here are kind of damp but not, not being broke down yet. Kind of keep peeling them back until we find something interesting. There we go, we found something interesting. So this is where they're making their castings and starting to eat these first couple of layers. Cereal boxes, looks like I'm getting an avocado tree. Anybody grow avocados even though you're in a zone that doesn't live or doesn't, isn't good for living avocados? I do. I don't know why, but it's just one of those things. Kind of, let's see, peek under here. Looks like they're already sta starting to make some good progress on that. 
I think I started doing this because I thought the corrugated cardboard would be a good place for breeding. And uh, you can see a, a very, very ripe cocoon right there. Probably is, is days within hatching. And here's another amber colored one that's probably a couple more days from hatching. Let my eyes get a, adjusted to this light and let's see if I can find any new cocoons. But it looks like they're certainly making fast work of the, the paper here. I don't see any brand new cocoons, but this is also a mix of the reds, the blues, and the euros. But there was no um, ground cardboard or cocoa peat or anything in here. This is all Amazon boxes and cereal boxes. So you don't really have to shred your boxes. You can just absolutely leave them in sheets and the worms will get around to it. You do not need to baby them. Okay, this is what I, this is what I, I came for. This little thing here where they're all lined up in a row and to me it seems like a perfect area to um, have cocoons. Just kind of like slip in there and zip it off. I don't know. Take it off like a sock. I don't know. So here's a blue worm. You can see the, the different color of the clitellum here where my thumbnail is, but it is not raised. And you also know it's a blue worm because he is hauling butt. If worms have butts, definitely. You know that's a blue worm, absolutely. But just trying to get a long enough picture of the difference in the color of the clitellum, but that it is not raised, which is why it is so difficult to tell blue worms from immature red wigglers. All right, <clears throat> let's get them some food. I'll put down some of these smaller layers as one noodle, and then I'll put some food on there. So, got some of those peppers that Ended up at the back of the refrigerator, darn it. Then we have some moldy melon. Good thing there's no smell-o-vision here, because this is going to be ripe. And by ripe, I mean rotten. So yeah, melon, peppers, and then I am going to cover up with more of these layers. All right, and then, oops, a little bit of a, somebody got wandering. And then I'm going to add some more noodles here. And then I will put this lid back on, kind of just to hold it down more than anything. So that's the lasagna bin. The premise behind that is that you don't have to tear up the cardboard. You can just keep layering food and cardboard and not have to have any fuss or any muss over it. And that the corrugated cardboard will be a good place for them to breed. I keep the system going, not because it's better than anything else, but because it's interesting. And I know that everybody here likes it. If you have any questions on the lasagna bin, put it below. Okay. This isn't really what I would call a project bin, but this is a bin that has been drying out after it's been harvested. And it is ready for me to sift it and hopefully get these worms back working on a bin that is uh, productive in doing something. So let me get the screens. Okay, let's see if it's dry enough. We'll take off the first layer. Let me switch this around. That way you can see what I'm sifting. As I've said before, it's kind of damp in the basement. The castings are not drying particularly well. In a couple of months, I'll be whining about how dry it is, but in the spring and summer, this is the story here. I 
guess I'm not getting a bad amount of castings. But these will have to dry out a little bit more if I'm going to get them through the eighth screen to capture the cocoons. Kind of gets clogged a little bit, so you got to kind of give it a good whack. Knock everything loose every once in a while. So that's not a bad haul. I'm doing good. But when I get done, this stuff is going to go into the leftovers bin. And then I'll let this dry until I can put it through the eighth. You can see where these things are kind of getting into little balls. That's when, you know, it's about time to quit. Because when they get put into these little balls, then they harden and they are just a pain in the butt to get um, dried out again and smooth enough again. Okay, so that's quite a bit of castings. Um, you know, that's my hand. So, let's see. One hand is a, a pint. So, so that's a gallon, maybe. So maybe a gallon and a half of castings. And we'll let these dry out for a little bit longer so that I can sift those through the finer screen and capture the um, the cocoons out of here. Because I can see that they did make it through the one eighth. All right, let's look at the leftover bins. So these are my leftover bins and some people wonder why I have them, but there's some things that just take forever. I don't know, I think that might be an acorn. This is a, a you know, avocado. I don't know how many months it took to get there. But a lot of this stuff just takes a really long time to uh, process, and I would rather get the cap get the uh, the castings out of there, um, and then also repurpose the worms onto something else. So let me get the top part of this and see if I can get any castings off of it. And I'm getting a little bit. I will take this and put it in to dry with the other one that we just harvested a little bit ago. Okay. Ooh, that's a pretty one. I'm going to put him in the big room, big boy, so he can roam. Still a little frozen, but it will be okay. Did get some canning done. Got a little bit of tomato ends there. And so then I'm just going to cover them up and probably won't mess with them for probably a month. 
they just really don't require a lot of work other than me leaving them alone. Um, I give them a little bit of food, uh, moisture, leave some sort of a lid covering this and uh, that way they can continue to work on all of these little seeds and um, little bits of wood and, and whatever else is in the leftovers. You can see a lot of seeds. Uh, if I was to plant this I'd get a huge crop of something. I don't know what exactly. All right, uh, I will show you my large leftover, large leftover bin. This is the large leftover bin. It has been uh, sifted recently, but I thought we could take a look in on it. Sometimes I'll put um, stuff in there so that it will loosen it up. Like I've told you in the past, if you sift things when they're too wet, you get these hard balls of castings that are very difficult to get straightened out. And sometimes you just have to mix them back in with more bedding and keep them at a moderate moisture in order for them to break back up again. But I normally keep the really big stuff like the chunks of wood, um, stupid compostable bags, peach pits, um, that kind of thing in here. Um, this really doesn't get looked in on very much at all. I just usually check on the moisture. Um, and then after I sift this, usually with the half inch, the half inch goes into the little leftovers bin um, and everything that's big stays over here. Uh, that way I don't mess with it as often. Sometimes I think it's just busy work that I enjoy doing. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts below. Um, I could just turn this into a live bin and be done with it, but I kind of enjoy seeing how long does it take some of this stuff to break down. And the only way I can do that is by keeping it separate from my normal operating bins. I would totally never remember otherwise. Cinnamon stick. Oop. Worm in the cinnamon stick. Check that out. And he's like, yep, put me back, lady. Back you go. Well, this is the end of the project videos. If you like it, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.